There are many model organisms that are used to study genetic rescue. Scientists use fruit flies, flower beetles, nematodes, yeast, and pea plants to perform experiments that would be impossible in target species like the endangered Florida panthers. Today, we're going to focus on a different species, Trinidadian guppies. Hi, I'm Dr. Sarah Fitzpatrick. My lab studies how evolution and genetics can be used in conservation. We use several model organisms to answer these questions, and today you're going to be working with data I collected in one of my favorite places on the island of Trinidad, which is part of the Caribbean country of Trinidad and Tobago. We came to Trinidad to study guppies, like the same ones you might see at a pet store, in their natural habitat. It might seem surprising, but these mountain streams in Trinidad provide a really nice setup for studying the same type of scenario that we see with many endangered species experiencing the extinction vortex. For this study, we focused on a tiny population of guppies with only a few individuals and very little genetic variation. These fish also had low survival and reproductive success and had less variation in traits like color. So even though guppies themselves aren't endangered, this small guppy population that we studied models many of the features of endangered species. That is, it's a small population, it has low genetic variation, and reduced survival and reproduction. And just like Florida panthers were isolated from other panthers by large distances, which prevented the exchange of genes, our guppies are isolated from downstream populations by a big waterfall. So these parallels make Trinidadian guppies a really great system for better understanding the details of genetic rescue so that we can have the best chance of success when we're actually trying to prevent extinction of an endangered species. So to experimentally test whether genetic rescue could help this population recover, we studied a scenario where guppies from a larger downstream population that had more genetic variation were released upstream from our target population. And individuals from the translocated site could then swim or get washed downstream and breed with the small recipient population. But those downstream individuals were prevented from swimming back upstream by small waterfall barriers. This resulted in gene flow, which is when genetic material from one population moves into another population. Ultimately, it's gene flow, the movement of genes between populations that causes genetic rescue. For example, as you've heard, in the 1990s, it was proposed to move panthers from a Western population into Florida. This gene flow, the introduction of that new genetic variation could then potentially allow Florida panthers to recover from inbreeding. In my lab, we're using guppies to study how new gene flow might or might not result in genetic rescue. To study this question in the wild, we captured, uniquely tattooed every fish and took DNA samples of all individuals in our study section of the stream every single month for 29 consecutive months. This was incredibly hard work involving many helpers in the field. In total, we caught and monitored close to 10,000 guppies. Our goal with all this work was to test whether gene flow caused genetic rescue by increasing genetic variation, improving survival and reproduction, and ultimately increasing population size. Did Dr. Fitzpatrick's research study show genetic rescue? Or did the guppy population crash after the new individuals were introduced? It's time for you to analyze the data and find out. 